Hey, hey there, I'm Jake, and get ready to app all night. Remember to always be nice to your elder, Scrolls Legends, a collectible card game in which you and your opponent battle in turn-based matches. The cards feature creatures from the Elder Scrolls series, and after you pick an avatar, it's ready to play. When it's your turn, draw a card and gain one Magicka, which is needed to play that card. You can choose to attack one in your own lane, or just the opponent directly. The number on the left is the amount of damage that card will deal in combat, while the number on the right represents how much damage it can take before it's destroyed. There are four types of cards. Support, actions, creatures, and items, which enhance creatures. Each player starts with a deck of 50 to 70 cards, and once you reduce your opponent's health to zero, you win. Which makes you a star. A Hades star. A strategy game where the goal is to colonize planets, collect valuable minerals, build space stations, grow your economy, and solidify your presence in dangerous star systems. First, let's choose a planet to colonize. Ooh, this one looks nice. Now it's time to select a ship and a shipment. Delivering shipments earns you crucial resources to increase infrastructure and travel further into the star system. Keep in mind that once your ship is in motion, you cannot change its course, and will have to wait until it reaches the destination. When you make a delivery, you'll have the ability to upgrade planets, which includes constructing. For example, you can build shipyards, which allow construction of ships and increases your empire's total fleet capacity. In order to carry out certain operations, you'll need enough hydrogen and will lose some when you do so, but it's all in order to get more credits which help you with the rest of your goals. In other words, this game really is all about strategy, but you can do it because you are I star. No, that wasn't bad grammar, that was just the spelling of Rystar, a platformer game which is unique in that the focus is less on jumping and speed and more on using Rystar's unnaturally stretchy arms. Use these arrows to navigate in A to jump, but if you're ready to face your foes instead of avoiding them, grab on and headbutt for points. Headbutting, yay! To use his arms, you have to click the direction you want to reach and B to grab. Enemies aren't the only things you can use this capability for. You can also use it to climb ladders or swing across bars, and you can even use this ability to travel via dandelion seeds. If you don't act fast in cases like this where you get trapped in small spaces with enemies, you will lose health quickly and die. Oh, and this here can help you get to where you need to go if you let go at the right time. But since I didn't, let's try again and again, and I'm getting a lot of momentum momentum here, and uh, I crashed into a wall, but it still got me closer to where I need to be, so I'll take it. Bye, star! As simple as this game can be, controls can make it more complicated if you don't use them exactly as you should. But you can achieve anything if you just keep your mind open. Out? Which is a version of pinball that I terribly mispronounced. Pinball, been there, done that, wrong! Pinout has many unique features, and the most notable one being that it is a race against the clock. Unlike the original arcade game where you just have to keep it from slipping between the two flippers, this has different challenges. Once you get past the first level, letting this happen actually doesn't end the game. However, since the goal is to get to the checkpoint before time running out, it doesn't help at all to go backwards because you'll just waste time. When you launch it through these lit up circles, you'll be earning seconds, which may not sound like a lot, but you'll see that it is when you start playing for yourself. As you go, challenges will arise like getting it past this barrier before the gates close. Sometimes games within the game will open up. Just flip to play and totally crush it. Ah, okay, well I lost at this game too, but I still have a chance at the other game. The, the main game. The Anyway, now that I've said game too many times, let's move on to Rogue Wizards. This dungeon crawling game has you navigating a map by either sliding or just tapping on a square you'd like to move to. You'll notice that it looks like the level is being created as you go, but it doesn't actually change each time you come back to an area. The layout matches this map, which can be helpful to you when you try getting to the door. If you see a barrel, tap on it to see what it contains. Later levels will have the option to equip yourself with things like potions and swords. When you encounter skeletons, use your sword to defeat them, which can give you rewards like coins. Woo! Money! You may also come across scrolls to open which give you incredibly vague advice like this. There will also be other characters later on that have apparently been waiting for you a long time and are now on your side to help you defeat more enemies. Links to all the apps can be found in the description below. And if you want a playlist of App All Night, good news, there's a playlist right here full of apps. Things to do on your phone to make you uh, have fun if you're on the subway or a bus or just at home. Or hey, if you're if you're in line at a favorite restaurant that maybe serves tacos, hashtag not an ad, I just really like Taco Bell. What are we talking about? Tacos and apps, yes. Links to those are below. Not tacos, just apps. And as always, thanks for watching.